Right, well, we're going to get to that PMI data again, signaling the manufacturing sector contracting at the fastest pace this year. Strength in the services side of things, as I mentioned, stocks initially dropping on the heels of that data, but now recovering and moving further to the upside. All week, we've been talking to guests across our shows about the state of the macro economy, and here's where they stand. I think we're looking at continued steady growth as the economy uh, you know, proves resilient, stays out of recession, and the, the labor market stabilizes. I think the jobs report on Friday was certainly not helpful to what was right. going on, mm. but I actually, I'm not in the camp that, these are, that this is screaming recession. I think it is clear that the economy is getting softer and earnings presumably will get somewhat softer with it. With it. All right, here to weigh in with more. We got Chris Williamson. He is chief business economist at S&P Global Market Intelligence. Chris, great to have you on here. So talk to me about the single biggest takeaway that you have from the totality of the data this morning. We saw some areas of strength, some areas of weakness. What's the thesis here? Yeah, so the, the big takeaway here is really that you've got sustained growth into August. So the third quarter is looking like it's going to be another reasonable uh, period of GDP expansion. Uh, at the same time, the underlying inflationary pressures are further cooling. So this is all soft landing scenario stuff. But as soon as you scratch beneath the surface of that, there are some worrying signals. And this is where the markets were getting worried in particular. That manufacturing sector is seems to be slipping deeper into, into contraction, leaving the economy very dependent on the service sector for its growth. So that's a key area of concern. Will that manufacturing downturn spill over to services and, and lead to a deeper downturn uh, later this year across a broader swathe of the economy? Chris, what's your base case? Do you expect that to happen? No, uh, quite simply because we should see some interest rate cuts, which should stimulate demand further. So it should arrest that downturn, exactly what they're supposed to do. We're getting these warning shots that things are not all good in manufacturing. Uh, and it, it, the current situation is likely to, to worsen there in the near term. Look at the orders inventory ratio in manufacturing. It's one of the lowest levels that we've seen since the global financial crisis. There's not enough orders coming in and stocks accumulating unsold stock. So manufacturers are struggling. The service sector is still doing well. Now, if you get some rate cuts, they're going to support that service sector and stop that spillover. So that's our base scenario, really, that you're going to have this domestic strength in the U.S. economy. Manufacturing is a small part of the economy. It's only around 10 percent. If you can keep that bigger chunk of the economy going, the service economy, which is much more receptive to interest rates and much more dependent on domestic demand and the labor market in particular, you should get this, this recovery sustaining into the second half of the year uh, quite nicely. Since you mentioned the labor market, I'm curious your take on the revisions data that we got yesterday, obviously coming in at the higher side of revisions, a decline of over 800,000 jobs over the course of the year here. Where are you getting clarity on the strength of the labor market in today's data? What is it telling you? Yeah, well, I think those revisions bring the data a bit more into line with some of the other data uh, on the labor market, including our own PMI numbers. Uh, but even these have been showing some weakness. So the, over the last five months, we've had a number of periods of companies cutting back on their on their staffing levels. Um, so there is a definite sign of the employment growth contracting. But there again, it, it's complicated here because depending on which sector, there's different reasons for the fall in employment. So in manufacturing, you're getting hesitancies hiring because of uncertainty about the outlook. But in the service sector, which is growing strongly in terms of output, employment's actually falling. And that's because companies just can't find the staff. So you've got two very different economies, really. The manufacturing one weakness and shedding staff in some cases. The services economy growing so fast it can't find the workers. Clearly, policymakers aren't going to like that scenario if it spills through to wage growth. But at the moment, it does look like those, those wage pressures are contained because headline inflation is coming down and the wage negotiating power is cooling. Chris, does it at all chase the urgency or change the urgency here of rate cuts just in terms of how large that first rate cut should be or maybe the pace is the better question there after we do get whatever cut ends up being or if we do get a cut in September, what then that pace should look like going forward? Yeah, well, so our view was that the markets had got ahead of themselves a bit um, and, and they possibly still are with the number of cuts they're, they're pricing in. Uh, it's certainly looking like September's uh, a pretty much a done deal now, providing you don't get any surprises with the next the next lot of inflation data. 
Um, and, and the numbers that we've got today, these numbers really play into that hand that you should get a 25 basis point cut based if you're just looking at these these numbers today. That softening of service sector input cost inflation, despite those those labour market conditions, it, it's it's a it's a nice picture of of contained wage negotiating power feeding through uh, to lower inflation. So I, I think with with that and those cracks that are appearing, certainly the weakness in demand that might worry some policymakers look like they, they might persuade them that let's move now, but let's move in an orderly fashion. Let's cut rates uh, gradually. Let's not spook anyone by by doing a 50 basis point cut that people might worry that they're, they, they, they know something that we don't. He knows the economy uh, really starting to struggle. It's not it's a it's a soft landing scenario still. And that should be that that landing should be uh, supported by by just some modest action on those rate cuts. All right, Chris Williamson, always great to have you. Thank you so much for your insight, especially to this breaking data that we're just getting out this morning. Chief Business Economist at S&P Global Market Intelligence. Thanks again.